This video is designed to illustrate the proper method for conducting basketball skill assessment tests, or BSATs. More importantly, we want to urge coaches to take BSAT scores seriously, in the same way that you treat athletes and their training seriously. You can download the instructions for conducting BSATs online at kSSO.org basketball. As a baseline for comparison, BSATs must be conducted consistently and accurately to have fair and competitive matches. Coaches can provide qualitative feedback by selecting the appropriate division level for the team, regardless of the player's SAT scores. Drills may be especially difficult for lower skilled and younger athletes. Several athletes may score zero points on one or more of the drills. Please do not make modifications to the assessment to make them feel more successful. Those modifications may be suitable, however, for future practice drills. The first step in conducting SAT scores is setting up the three assessment stations. The shooting and rebounding stations both need a basketball hoop and free throw area. If you only have one hoop, you cannot run these stations at the same time. The dribbling station will need a long, narrow stretch of at least 12 meters by 6 meters, preferably away from the basketball hoops, maybe in the hallway. If pressed for space, you may use the side of the court as well. Depending on your space, number of volunteers, and time, you may want to set up two of each station to speed up the process. Athletes rotate through each station, having their scores recorded and compiled at the end. If you are a very small team or have only limited space, you may decide to have the whole team complete one assessment, then reconfigure for the next assessment. Conducting BSATs will likely take up an entire practice. This is a great pre-planned activity for a first practice and can help coaches gauge ability levels, thus informing what drills and practice plans will be used for future practices. The first assessment is dribbling. Six cones are lined up each two meters apart with a line of floor tape at the first cone and two meters after the final cone. Watch as Marcus dribbles between the cones, alternating left to right. Once he reaches the end, he sets down the ball, hurries to the start line, grabs a new ball, and this continues for 60 seconds. You may want to allow a few practice runs for athletes who are unfamiliar with the task. Marcus gets one point each time he crosses the midpoint between two cones. Marcus only gets the points if he uses legal dribbles with either hand and has control of the ball from one midpoint to the next. A perfect run through the course would equal five points. If you noticed in that last run, Marcus double dribbled while rounding the third cone. He would thus receive four points for that run. Again, athletes have 60 seconds to accrue as many points as possible. The second drill, perimeter shooting, is probably the easiest and most straightforward for athletes and coaches. Measure an arc 2.75 meters, or about 9 feet, from underneath the basket. Mark the arc with floor tape, or use cones to indicate the boundary line. Athletes start at the free throw line and have 60 seconds to shoot as many baskets as they can from behind the arc. Athletes should retrieve their own rebounds and return behind the arc to shoot again. Each basket is worth two points, no matter how far back they shoot. Volunteers should have extra balls placed underneath the basket. If an errant ball bounces too far away, the athlete may choose to pick up one of these balls instead. Lower skilled athletes may use these spares more often than others. The final drill, rebounding, may be the hardest for our athletes. The setup is the same as the perimeter shoot drill. A volunteer will stand behind the arc and intentionally miss shots to make rebounding situations. The athlete will start behind the arc to begin and then be allowed to move anywhere on the court to retrieve the rebound. After rebounding, the athlete will pass the ball to the volunteer to continue shooting rebounds. The volunteer will move around the outside of the arc to create new rebounding situations. The scores for this drill will likely be the lowest. Athletes receive one point for catching the ball before it touches the ground. Athletes receive two points for catching the ball with both feet off the ground. Zero points are awarded for balls caught after touching the ground. Extra balls will be on hand and provided the volunteer should an errant ball roll away. After all drills are completed and scores recorded, add up the three scores to form the athlete's total score. And if on a unified team, don't forget to conduct BSATs on partners too. Then rank players in order greatest to least. Use this ordered list as a guide to divide your players into teams. In general, higher scores should be on one team and lower on another. If you have scratch paper, it may help to rewrite the names in this order. Many additional factors, such as social interactions, should also be considered when forming teams. After forming these tentative teams, scrimmage among the teammates. Gameplay scenarios may indicate to a coach that an athlete needs to move up or down a team. Ideally, all athletes on a team should be equally suitable for an ability division. However, in reality, sometimes a team may be mixed ability. If there are not enough athletes of each ability to form their own team, a coach may put, for example, three level 3 athletes and three level 2 athletes on the same team. While not ideal, in this mixed ability situation, SOKS prefers playing up to your highest level athlete versus playing down. This challenges lower skilled players 
and does not allow higher players to dominate the game. When registering for competition, be sure to include each athlete's total score as well as the team's ability level division as suggested by the coach. Lastly, thank you for volunteering. We know these drills may be difficult for coaches and athletes. We appreciate your efforts in providing the highest quality coaching that you are able to donate to our Special Olympics athletes. Thank you for watching.